Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am back for another video for W plus nine and I'm so excited. The last time I was here, I showed you folks how to do some complex masking. masking. Today, we're gonna take it a step back and I'm gonna show you how to make two cards using one stamp set and these are actually pretty easy to do. So the stamp set that I'm gonna be using today is the W plus nine Miss You Lot stamp set. Look at her she is so darling I, I could just color her over and over and over again this stamp set isn't very big she makes for a great focal point on a card you really don't need much outside of this but I'm also going to be using the W plus 9 sunshine layers die set and I adore this die set, especially the outer rectangle here. And then that rectangle there on the inside, you can use that by itself or you can use it for layering. And we're actually gonna be taking a look at that here in a little bit. I can think of so many different uses for this die set. This is definitely a must have for your stash, stash folks. And the stitches just really make it look spectacular. I'm also going to be using one of the landscape border dies from the set to die cut some of my mask, but we're going to take a look at that here in a little bit. All right, so let's get started on our cards. So I really enjoy a stamp set that you can use multiple ways. You can get lots of use out of them, and this one is perfect. I have some Nina Solar White cardstock that I had die cut with that inner rounded rectangle that was in the sunshine layers die set and I'm going to place my little girl here on it. I am placing it over to the left because when it's all finished I want her to be in the left third of the card. That is the most appealing to the eye and also it helps enforce that she is our focal image. I'm going to be using some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because I am going to be Copic coloring up both of my cards. Now I do double stamp both of these panels. I just don't show that to you because I do want to make sure that I have as much detail in her as I can. I do end up going in later and outlining the, my images with a Copic Save pen. But before I even start that, I always try to make sure that my lines are nice and solid. Now I have a panel of Nina Solar White cardstock. This is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm placing my girl over on the third of this one. Honestly, folks, it's probably not going to be hard to figure out that this card panel is just going to be clean and simple. It is so easy peasy. I am doing the same thing again. I am stamping her on my card panel and I will, I think I actually end up inking these about three times each. Now I'm going to take a, some Simon Says Stamp masking paper and I'm going to create a mask for my for both cards. I'm only going to make one mask because it's a little bit of cutting. And also I like to make sure that I've already stamped the ink off my stamp once before I actually make, make the mask because I don't want any of that black ink uh, blending out onto the rest of my card. Okay, so now I'm gonna start coloring in my little girl here. This is actually really easy coloring. I am not putting in a whole bunch of time into it because I really don't need to. She's just darling on her own. Now I'm gonna be honest, I can color in skin. However, it, it takes me well out of my comfort zone. Although, I would rather color in skin than color in a balloon. I don't know why that is but I'm just way more comfortable coloring in skin than I am balloons. Funny. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map out where my shadows are gonna go. And I am starting with the E000. This is my lightest color that I use for skin tones, but I am using it to map out my shadows because it is the lightest. So you can always add more color, but it's really hard to take it away. That's all that much more important with skin tones. I am taking the slow, although I have this sped up, and that's what I strongly recommend, folks, is if you're uncomfortable coloring in skin tones, just take it slow. Make your lines to start with very fine, very thin. As it is, the tip of my marker is just touching the paper. And I'm not doing any special technique. I'm just pretty much drawing in lines and calling it a day. After the E000, I had the E11. I went directly over the E000. Uh, 
and now I have the EO4. Now this is where most folks get scared is because this EO4 is so dark to begin with. However, keep going. Don't stop here. Overall, once everything is blended out, you're not even going to notice that you had this reddish brown color on there to begin with. All you're going to see is the shadow. Also, keep going in general because this is what happens when, with skin tones, especially if you don't have any other color on your card panel at the moment. There is no other point of reference for them, so everything is going to look dark. It's going to look like this little girl has a tan. She does not. As soon as you start adding all of the other colors and there's some perspective or a point of reference, you're going to be surprised at exactly how light she really is in the end. So just keep going. Keep at it. You can do it. I went back to the EO, E11 again to blend out that EO4. Now I have the EO2. This is not a color that I had used before, but now that I'm working my way back, I can use some of it. Now I'm at the E00, and as I'm working my way back, I am making sure that I'm leaving tons and tons and tons of white space. When you're coloring in skin tones, unless there is a very direct light source or unless you really want to play up a specific light source, keep as much highlight as you possibly can and that will also help make sure that everything isn't too dark in the end. Now that I have all of my other colors on there, I can really start blending this out. I'm back to the E000 and I am coloring in everything with this. I'm going over the top of all of those shadows that I had put in there and I'm covering up all of the white space that I had preserved. Now my E000 is running a little bit low on ink so what I'm doing is I'm taking that E00 and I'm going back in and just blending that, those shadows out just a tiny bit more and that does help a bunch. Also, look for opportunities to draw in your own lines. So you can kind of get the idea that this, this little girl has kneecaps, but you they're not really there. I think Dawn drew in just a couple of little dashes. Well, I really wanted to make sure that she had legitimate knees. So I played that up when I added my shadows. And then I didn't have to add any drawn lines or anything like that. I just really played up, played it up with my shadows. All right, so now that her skin is colored in, I decided that I was going to make her a brunette. So I'm bringing in some more E's. This is the E21 through 29 family. And again, my E21 is a little on the dry side. So what I end up doing with her, because I know that I can't, make her hair light enough because I don't have enough ink in my marker. I'm going to make her go just a little bit darker, but I do want to have some of the highlights in there because that's what helps convey the message of, of dimension and depth. That being said, her hair in these lines are so fine and she has these fairly tight ringlet curls on the side of her head and they can be kind of tricky to color in. However, it is forgiving enough that you can kind of fake it till you make it. As long as you don't add too much dark in her hair and make the poor thing look like she has helmet head, then use some creative license. If you feel that it would be best served to add a shadow in a certain area, by all means do so. If you're afraid that by adding that shadow in there is going to make it too dark and you're not going to be able to see any uh, definition or dimension, then leave it out. It's just fine. You can always go back after you have everything colored in and you could add more color to it. I would suggest instead of going in with your darkest color, if you're gonna do that, I would go in with maybe your second darkest color or even your second lightest color. Uh, anything a, just a bit darker than what your lightest color is gonna be is still gonna reinforce the, the idea of definition and dimension. Now, I get a little bit carried away around her curls because they are so tiny and I go a little bit darker than what I actually intended to but it's fine she still looks like brunette unless and also unless you look too close you're not even going to notice it 
The other thing to keep in mind on both of these cards is I'm not getting overly excited that I can't stay within all of these lines of these little curls that are staying out that are sticking out of uh, all over her head. I'm sorry, because I know that I'm going to be doing some ink blending around her and you're not even going to notice that ink is actually going to blend out to that Copic. Now, you don't want to get wild and crazy, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room and that's awesome. That definitely makes things go a little bit smoother and a little bit easier. Now I'm back at my E21 and I blended that out as best as I could, but again, it's a little on the dry side. So I'm doing the same trick here that I did on, when I colored in her skin and I'm bringing in my second lightest color and I'm just extending that out just a little bit more and it does actually help contribute to the blending. Okay, so now we're gonna color in her little boots here. And for continuity, I decided to use the same colors on her boots that I did her hair. So she's gonna have little brown boots. Honestly, when I started making these cards, I had the idea of what I was going to do with them. Like I, I knew what the final layout was gonna be. I just had no idea what colors I was going to use. I was just kind of winging the whole thing as I went along. I went along and this is actually sometimes one of my favorite ways to make cards. It's always nice to have a plan. However, sometimes it's super awesome to be able to just let your creativity go and see where it takes you. Now, I did the same thing. I mapped it out with the E21, went in with a little bit of E23, I'm and now I'm at the E25, and then 29. I am being careful how far I bring those lines out until I start working my way back. It's always the same principle, folks. You want to conserve as much of that highlight as you possibly can. And especially if you can preserve it until the end, then that's great. Then you have way more control over how it's going to turn out in the end than if you just go in, go for the gold and add a whole bunch of shadow and try to get that dimension and depth right out the gate. It rarely works out. So now that her little boots are done, we can start coloring in her little dress here. And I thought a blue green dress would be super fabulous. So with her dress, this is like actually an overall simple shape. There isn't a whole lot to it. Now I do go in and I add some shadows in places that you don't necessarily need to do that. Like right there where I can see those, the, the valleys or the dips in the lines of the image. I kind of extend those out a little bit because I want them to look like fold. You do not have to do that. You could just simply color, color this girl in or this girl's dress in really, really easy. So you would put in your shadow right underneath her where her little arm is going across the front of her. You would put in a little bit of shadow uh, up the sides of her dress and then of course underneath her dress because there isn't a light source underneath there. And then that would be all that you have to do. You don't have to do anything extra to it. I like adding those little lines in there. I think it gives the finished uh, image a little bit more character, a little bit more depth and dimension, but you certainly don't need to feel like you, you need to do that because you don't. So I, as usual, I started with my lightest, worked out to my darkest. Now I'm working back to my lightest and this started to bleed all over the place. I'm not even sure which color it is, but it was definitely bleeding outside the lines, which was really unfortunate. And also because it was bleeding outside the lines, whatever color was doing that, it was basically erasing all of my shadows. So it either had to be the B45 or the B or the BG45 or the B23. But it what ended up happening is I ended up having to fight it a little bit and just keep going back in and reinforcing those shadows. But it was no big deal. It worked out in the end. What I started to do to work the bleeding back into the girl's dress is I just took my colorless blender and I pushed it in there with a couple swipes across it, let it dry, went back and did that again a couple more times and then just let it go because I'm, like I said, I'm gonna be doing some ink blending around this and you won't even notice it. 
So now we're going to start working on our little kitty cat here. I have the C3, C5, and C7 because I made her shirt look white. And I do apologize that I did not have the footage on here. I have no idea what happened to it. I do want to give some contrast between this little kitty cat and her shirt. Although I think a little white cat would be adorable. It would blend in too much to her shirt. So I'm going to take it a little bit darker. It's uh, not quite a black cat. It'll probably be more, uh, probably like a dark gray cat. And that's just fine. I am being fairly conservative with my C7 here because I don't want to completely obscure this little kitty's face. The eyes are just teeny, teeny, tiny. And like I said, I do end up going over this later with a Copic multi-liner. But still, I wanted to make sure that you could still see that little kitty cat's face just fine regardless. So I went in with the C3, C5, did my deepest shadows with the C7. Now I'm working my way back to the C3. And then I'm going to call that good. This one was really easy coloring. I did get out a R22 and just barely touched the mouth of the kitty cat and just on the inside of the ears. And then I'm taking that colorless blender and I just barely blended out that R22 inside the ears. So they look pink as opposed to a darker red. Okay, now we are going to start doing some ink blending. And I used one of the landscape border dyes and cut some more Simon Says Stamp masking paper. Because I want this girl to look like she's on a hill. So I cut that down. Now I'm placing it where I want it on my little panel here. And I'm making sure that it's just below the underneath of her dress. So... I want the sky to you. I want you to be able to actually see the sky through her legs. So I'm making sure that I put it just below that. And you'll kind of see what I mean when it's done, why I want to do that. It kind of helps break up the image and it doesn't look like everything is super proportional because it doesn't need to look that way. Okay, so here's a little trick to add just a little bit more interest to your cards without distracting from your main image. Add something in the background that makes sense but isn't going to distract the eye. So I took some of the clouds from the Sunshine Layers die set and I die cut those out of masking paper and I'm going to add those to my card panel. The clouds are going to be a natural part of this scene, but they're not obtrusive. So it, it makes sense. Your eye is going to see, see them and it's going to recognize that she's outside and there's clouds in the sky. But the first thing that you're going to notice is her. So that's always a good trick for you to try. Now I'm going to start doing my ink blending. I have the W plus nine Bo Peep ink. I think that this blue is just the a most lovely shade of blue I've ever seen. I just love it to pieces. When I first started doing the ink blending on this panel, aside from fighting those mas masks tooth and nail, and I did, an easy fix would have been to fold them over, but I actually need them again. So I'm trying to sal salvage them as much as possible. And I was afraid it was going to rip my panel if I turned it over on the back. So I'm going to fight away. But anyway, when I first started ink doing the ink blending, I thought that I might actually ink... Uh, start my ink blending heavier at the top, working my way lighter towards what is eventually going to be a grassy hill. However, I decided as I was doing this that she could really pull off a deeper, bolder background and be just fine. It wouldn't distract from her at all. So it took me, ended up taking me a little bit longer to do all the ink blending on it, but in the end, it was so worth it. Now I'm working in some Falling for Blue. This is another one of my favorite blue colors. And at this point, I was still trying to tell myself that I was going to keep everything quite a bit lighter. So you can still see some of my uh, tool marks, and it's not nearly as dark as I eventually end up going. But I'm going to keep working at it, building up my layers. I do eventually bring in a third color for another piece that's going to go on this card, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. 
Now I'm back to the Bo Peep ink, and this is about the point where I decide that I'm really gonna build up the ink blending on this background and make it pretty dark. I am trying to make sure as much as possible that I keep those clouds pinned down that I'm not getting any ink underneath them because they are going to be white clouds. We are going to add some shading to add a little bit of depth and dimension and a little bit of realism to them, but I want to still make sure that they're as white as possible because I, I don't want to have to try cleaning ink out of my clouds later on. Now I am back to the Falling for Blue ink and I'm just gonna keep working at this back and forth until I get the color that I want and I think I'm actually almost done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to work on the grass and I'm going to remove all of the masks except for the mask over the top of the girl because we need to make sure that she's still covered up. But I am going to remove the mask from where the grass is. Now when I cut this mask, I made sure that I keep kept both pieces, both the concave portion of it and the convex version of it. So I could use both of them to do all of the ink blending, blending on my card panel. So at this point, I'm trying to make sure that I'm hanging on to all of my masks because I am going to use them again. I'm actually gonna use uh, a couple of them for both cards, but I definitely need all of my masks for so I can finish the rest of this card and you'll see what I'm talking about here soon. I have my hillside masked off with the other portion of that hillside mask that I had made earlier. And now I'm going to start the ink blending on that. I am starting with a mojito ink. This is kind of a, a, um, a light, off green, I suppose. I, I guess I really don't have a description for it. I really enjoy this green ink, however, because I it's surprisingly light for a green ink. And I really enjoy that. Now that I've kind of given myself a little bit of a base layer here, I'm coming in with beanstalk ink. Now this is a brilliant green ink. I love this ink. It is so much fun. And now I'm working in just a tiny bit of apple teeny ink i don't want too much i don't want it too dark but i do want to add a little bit of shadow up uh, along the curves on the right and left side because i want it to look like it has a little bit of dimension now as it turns out when this card dries back it dry i didn't add enough so it dr actually dries back pretty light and you can't really tell that it's there but that's okay so now that I have all of the ink blending done on that first panel, I have used the mask from that card and I put it over on the girl on my full panel. And I'm very lightly doing some ink blending with Bo Peep ink just around the uppermost portion of her body. I'm going a little bit lower than what I did with the other card because there isn't gonna be anything else going on in the background, but I'm making sure that it's not going all the way down to her feet. Now that I have that done, I'm going to take off the mask and this is gonna virtually be one of the last things I do to this card. This, by nature, is a clean and simple card. We have a single focal point on our card and we're calling it a day. That's exactly what a clean and simple is. So I've taken this panel with my little girl on it and all of the ink blending and I've put it inside the die cut piece that I had made using that rectangle die from the Sunshine Layers stamp set. I lined that up exactly where I wanted it. I placed my mask back on and I just peeled it off the ink blended portion of it but made sure it was still sticking to the white portion of the panel. So they would be exactly where they need to be as I start ink blending these. Now that I know that this is going to be the last of using these particular masks, I am more willing to fold them over so everything stays in place and I don't have to fight it as much as I start my ink blending. 
Okay, so I'm going to be doing the same ink blending as I did before. The only difference this time is I'm using Falling for Blue. I'm using that to kind of map out where all I, where I want all of my color to go. And then I'm going to be bringing in Nautical Navy and making it just a wee bit darker. So when that smaller panel goes on there, it looks like the outer edges are dark yet and it starts to fade in as it goes towards the center of the card. I'm also not going to do anything on the inside of this panel because it's going to be covered up with a small panel. So there's no need for me to waste my time or to worry about something that nobody's going to see after everything else is finished. I am building these colors up as I go and I had this really bad habit when I was making this card. I would pick up my Falling for Blue mini blending tool and I would open up the nautical navy ink pad and every time I would start adding ink <laughs> adding that ink to the the mini blending tool it was ridiculous anyways I'm building up these colors and going darker as I go I do end up deciding that I didn't want this terribly dark with the nautical navy because I didn't want too much contrast now right now they both look really like there's a lot of contrast between the two of them that's fine this ink is going to dry back and it will look more smooth when it's done and there won't be that much contrast the other thing I decided to do was go over it one time with the bow peep. You're not going to see it, but it does help everything smooth out and it does lighten just a tiny bit more when it's done. Now it is time to ground our little girl here on our clean and simple panel. This is the easiest way I have found to add some grounding underneath images. I take my lightest color, in this case this is a G12, and I'm just letting my marker skip across the paper. It, the tip of it is barely touching it. I am literally allowing my hand to slightly go up and down as I move across the panel so it feels like it's skipping. And I do have my marker tilted at an angle a little bit. I want my lines to be a little bit darker, but because I don't have any real pressure on the card, I can actually extend the tips of those lines out a little bit so they don't look blunt. And then I work my way from the G4 to G12 to G14 to G17, and then I work my way back out to the G12. Now, once I get to the G12, I do extend that ground out just a little bit more, so everything looks a little bit more uh, blended, and also it looks like there's quite a bit more ground underneath her. I wanted the deepest, darkest areas directly underneath her. I am not concerned about a light source. I just want to make make it look like she's actually standing on ground and she is casting a little bit of a shadow. I do go in with the G12 on this panel. You can't see it. It drew back, uh, dried back just a little too much, but that's fine. You could add darker colors if you'd like. I just decided to leave it as it was. So now I want to start adding some depth and dimension to our clouds. And this is incredibly easy to do. I have the C1, the C3, and a colorless blender. I'm using my C1 to map out where the shadows are going to go. And I am just going in where the clouds themselves dip. I go along the edge a little bit, but I make sure that I don't go completely out to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of white highlight there. I need to make sure that I have have some room to blend it out but also you want to leave as much white space as you can for two reasons number one that's how you achieve a white look in any object and number two this way it makes after everything is blended out the clouds look like they have a little bit of roundness to them and that's perfect that's exactly what we want to see because clouds wouldn't be flat right they would they would have some roundness to them and we really want to whoever Whoever's looking at this, we really want them to get the idea of that. Now, I decided to bring in a C00 and blend that out just a little bit more. That wasn't quite enough, so now I have the colors blender. I did end up getting some of that Falling for Blue ink on the inside of my masks here. So I'm taking the colorless blender and I'm kind of working that out a little bit. It worked pretty good. Uh, you really can't see it on the finished card. Okay, so 
all of that is done. Now we're going to make the card base for this card. You could totally put those two panels on a uh, card base and a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base and call it a day. However, I am in love with shaped cards. I love it when the card base actually matches the shape of the finished card. I think it looks so darling. So I put that through my die cut machine. I made sure that it was sticking out just above where the fold was so it didn't cut as I put that through my machine. And now I have a top folding card that matches my panels perfectly. I start from the bottom and make sure that those are lined up. It doesn't matter about the top because there is some space up there that is uh, straight as opposed to our our panels. So laying it up from the bottom, working your way to the top, actually make sure that everything lines up perfect and it looks right. I added some Nuvo Aqua Shimmer to the eyes and the cat collars on both of the cards as well as the highlights of the clouds and stamp the sentiment from the Miss You Lot stamp set on both of them. And that's it. We are done. We are good to go. I hope you enjoyed my cards today. I would love to hear your comments below. I truly enjoy, as always, guesting for W plus nine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time.